everybody, it's just me LTM. The video today is about blocking. I'm in the middle of a crochet project and I've never seen this before. I'm I'm just this this way through, this is what I've created as part of the project. And it's telling me to block now before I continue on. So the rest this is a shoulder piece, this is a neckline, the hole is the neckline, and that's the shoulders. And I need to continue on and, and create the rest of the top by picking up stitches along the bottom. It's telling me already to block this before I continue on with the next part of the project. So I thought I might as well take the opportunity to show you about blocking. This yarn is a cotton acrylic blend, 60% cotton and 40% acrylic. It's a sheep G's whirl. If you're new to blocking, you might not know what that is. It's about stretching and making your item have a particular shape. Now, if I show you this, I'll put a close-up of my project here, and then you compare that to how it looks in the picture that is part of the pattern. And shout out here to Christina Haddering, who is the person who wrote this pattern. I've uh, obtained this pattern through Ravelry, so if you're interested in the pattern, that's where to go to, to get it from. So you will notice in the picture of the item that comes with the pattern that the section that is across the yoke here, across here and across the top of the back, you can actually see the scalloped sections. What blocking will do will be to stretch this so you can see this pattern a lot better. The pattern gives me particular dimensions, how far I should actually stretch this item to. You need a few things to be able to block successfully. You need pins to actually hold your item down in the shape that you want it to be. You need something to block on. Now you can, you can simply use a folded up towel and in my previous locking video that's exactly what I used. I just rolled up a towel because my item was quite small and I used a towel. But in this case I have these foam mats that I can pin into. So the only criteria for whatever it is you're blocking onto is that you can put pins into it. And the third thing is a flat space flat spaces fill up with things really quickly in my house and it can sometimes be hard to find a vacant flat space. But you need a flat space as big as whatever the size of your project is or the size of the board that you are blocking your item onto. Now that we've got equipment out of the way, what else do you need to know? The other thing you need to know is that there are different ways of blocking and which technique you choose really is dependent on what kind of yarn is used in your project. Different techniques are appropriate for natural fibres than for artificial fibres. So the previous blocking video that I made that I referenced earlier, that was a 100% acrylic yarn, so I used steam blocking. This yarn, I'm really not 100% certain what technique I should use because it is a 60% cotton 40% acrylic yarn that I'm using. For cotton and other natural fibres you can use the wet blocking technique where you simply wet the item, spread it out into the shape that you want, pin it down and let it dry. That doesn't work with acrylic because acrylic is basically plastic and moisture doesn't really do anything to plastic whereas moisture on a natural fibre allows those fibres to relax. So for acrylic yarn, you have to use steam blocking. It kind of melts the plastic to a degree so that it's malleable and you can stretch it into the shape that you want it to be in. So I'm thinking that what I'm going to try is I'm going to try wet blocking this time. And if that doesn't work, then I can steam block. So the first thing you really have to decide when you're going to be doing blocking is what technique are you going to use? Are you going to be doing wet blocking or are you going to be doing steam blocking? If you're steam blocking, you need something that will create steam. It can be your iron or you might use a garment steamer. 
once you know what technique you're going to use, then you need to get your equipment. So let's have a go at blocking this item. Here is my item sitting on the board that I'm going to use. And I'm just giving it a measure so I can see how far from the blocking that's required my item is. So this is showing it is 39 centimetres across and the pattern states that it should be 49 centimetres across so I need to stretch it about 10 centimetres that way and then so in the other direction it's showing to be hmm, 26 and a half 27 centimetres in this direction and the pattern tells me that it needs to be 37 so again I need to stretch it a good 9 to 10 centimetres in both directions so that's quite substantial and when it's sitting here you can see that you can actually see the pattern that is part of the design however if that's stretched that's going to become a lot more apparent these are some of the pins that I have these are called T-pins these are quite cheap to purchase T-pins obviously because of their shape. You can also purchase specific blocking pins. So these come in two sizes. You have these ones that have just four prongs on them. And then you have these ones that have eight prongs on them. So I will work out as I go which ones are going to be best to use. Probably these ones because the edges are all straight edges. So these ones are probably going to be my preference in this case. Okay, so here we are. The item is now wet. So I need my tape measure and I need my pins. Uh, I am going to start with these, these pins. As I said before, because I need straight edges, I think these pins are going to work perhaps better than the other pins that I have. I'm going to just kind of centralise this a bit and I'm going to pin one side down and then stretch. I do need to be careful of this neckline because I don't want the neckline to stretch out of, out of shape. The pattern did have me do a slip stitch around the neckline which is specifically to help it not move out of shape so I'm just putting this in one stitch in from the edge and I'll just do that all the way across I just had a little bit of a pause for thought there then because I need to stretch it in both directions so I think I'll get it stretched. I'm going to take these out. I need to stretch it both this way and this way so I think I will stretch it this way first and then we'll see how we go. So perhaps I should start from the middle. And pin it this way. So if you remember this was about 27 centimeters I believe and it needs to be 37 centimeters so I actually need to give myself a bit more space here because it's not going to reach. So quite handy if your board has markings on it. This one has this kind of a pattern and that will do. It would be better if it had actual straight lines like on a cutting mat or something like that because then you can be sure that you are shaping your item properly. Now I don't really feel I need to put other pins in here because they are holding that quite well. So it is going to need to be stretched this way as well so I might stretch here and put these in to the neck because I don't want my neckline to stretch more than it's meant to. I 
have to work out. Okay, so that's 37 that way. And now we need to go 47 in this direction. So if that's the edge at 47, you have to go all the way over there. Tempted to just pop a pin in my measuring tape. Oh, it's going to fall off. And then I can use that as a line to stretch these two. So if this pin is in at the, see, one, two, three, four, five. The fifth row of clouds, so one, two, three, four, fifth row of clouds. Stretch that whole thing. Now you can see that is considerable stretch that I'm having to put into that, and it's really going to change the look of this pattern. Alrighty, magically, here we are. It's the next day. This is entirely dry. The weather here has been a bit humid, uh, but this does feel very dry. And you can see how much more open the pattern is with it stretched as opposed to how it was before I have blocked it. So now's the moment of truth. Time to take out the pins and see whether it's stays pretty much where it is or springs back closed. Fingers crossed. Here we go. We're going to start with the neck because that will be the simplest area. Okay, that is springing back a little bit. And I, I do expect it to spring back to some degree. I, I think it's a bit unrealistic to expect it to stay exactly as it is right now. So. I'm happy to accept some level of springing back and the neckline in particular is not of particular concern. <sighs> Here goes, I'm a bit anxious. Okay, so that stayed pretty much where it was. Might zoom in a bit and see if we can get you a bit closer. So here we go. Hmm. So that did spring back a bit, which is kind of what I expected to do. So that is sitting, maybe if I put a pin back here, that is sitting about there. From there, about there. And when I take out the pin, yeah, it is springing in about mm, half a centimeter, I'd say. Maybe a whole centimetre, actually. So, yes, the whole thing is shrinking back in. And after I've taken out all of the pins, I'll make a decision as to whether I need to try blocking it again using the steam process. Because, as I said, this is a 60% cotton 40% acrylic yarn and I would usually use steam blocking for acrylic. I thought because of the high cotton percentage that I could perhaps do wet blocking so that's what I've been trying. Very interestingly this side is not 
really shrinking in very much. Hmm, interesting. All right, so here is the item. I have undone all the pins, as you can see. It did shrink back in to a degree, but not all of the way. Uh, and so I thought I would measure it and see what the dimensions are. So you might remember uh, this was 37 and I had to stretch it to 47. So it currently is 45 centimetres across. Just double check this side as well. This side is come down about the same area. 44 centimetres across and then this way I'm pretty sure it was about 27 and I had to stretch it to 37 and that is like 36 and a half there and 36 there so it's not that far off the required measurements it's certainly considerably larger than it was when I first made it so I don't think I'm going to block it again. I think I will just now continue on with the pattern. So there you have it. I have wet blocked this piece of crochet. I've been standing here um, pulling it, stretching it a little bit this way. And I am very happy with how that's looking. So the lace pattern that's part of the design is much more evident you really couldn't see it like that you couldn't see any real air holes through it prior to blocking um, the size is getting close to right I popped it over my head this is the shoulder piece for a top or a tunic that I'm making um, I popped it over my head and it seems to be pretty good size a pretty good fit considering that now I'm going to be making the rest of the top and the sleeves so I'm quite happy with that and I'm going to go with that I'm not going to steam block it I don't think for one or two centimeters that it's worth going to the bother of doing the steam blocking so I'm not going to do that I'm now going to continue on with this so don't forget if you are going to block a project Find out what kind of yarn it is first because that will determine what kind of blocking process you use, whether it be wet blocking or you can do wet blocking by soaking, which I did. You can do wet blocking by using a spray bottle and spraying water onto your item. Uh, or if it's a, an acrylic yarn, you will need to consider something like steam blocking. You can Google all of those and you'll find plenty of great instructions on how to do those online. Hope you got some benefit out of that. If you liked this video, I strongly suggest you hit the like button that will tell YouTube that this is the kind of content that you like and you will see more of it getting recommended to you, not necessarily just from me, but from other, uh, other creators as well, but similar kinds of content. So hit the like button so that you get to see more of the videos that you want to see. If you're really interested, you can hit the subscribe button too and the bell notification if you want to be notified when I publish more videos. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day. That's all from me. Bye for now.